Today I'm going to show you how I make my spaghetti carbonara and I'm going to pair it with a non-traditional wine. The pasta. So what we need for that, pecorino. So I've already grated some for, so for one portion for this size. I'm using about 10 grams grated. And you know, pecorino, sheep's cheese. Um, that's what it's traditionally used. If you can't find pecorino, um, you can use aged Parmigiano Reggiano. Um, the older, the better, because it's, it's more subtle and more less sharp, uh, in my opinion. Uh, so yeah, we're going to have cheese. For my recipe, I've got one whole egg plus an extra egg yolk. I should be able to see that. The extra egg yolk gives it some creaminess and and makes it rich and clings onto your mouth a bit more and it, it makes a creamier sauce. I've got some diced pork belly, which I've braised and cured in some spices. That's gonna be my base, so I don't have pancetta on hand. I've got this, it's cured in a similar manner, pepper, mm, slightly salty fat, excellent. This is 100 grams of spaghetti, you can see. Quite nice. It's got that. It's quite rough to touch. It's got that starch, and that's what I'm looking for. It's going to come out quite starchy. That's what I want in my pasta. Uh, yeah. And for people who want to know what pasta brand I'm using, I'm using this one. You know, it says it's bronze dyes, dried at low temperatures. Very good pasta all in all. Quite expensive, especially for in Hong Kong, but very high quality and very delicious. Gonna need some salt. All right, both salts, my finishing salt and salt for the pasta water. Pepper, and I'm gonna blue blooming that with the oil, just to really make it important. And I've got an extra ingredient, which is like a pork glass. I'm not sure if you can see in here. It's like a sauce that, it's like a pork reduction, got the gelatin, got the stuff like that. And I'm adding that to my egg mixture once I've added it. Uh, just really make, give it that oomph. That, uh, there's something that's added to it and it's a umami, it's tasty, it sticks around to your mouth, it is utterly delicious. And that's one of my chef secrets that I use in my restaurant. Let's start off with the egg. So I'm going to add a pork glass and I'm going to add the cheese that I already grated. And people would normally add the black pepper in here. Normally I don't. I like to blue my pepper in the oil. So I'm not going to do that. That is ready, set aside. I'm going to leave more of the cheese to grate over later. Okay, let's get the pasta on the go here. So I'm going to... I use a cast iron pan. Oh, why are you not turning on? Let's start that again. It would help if I turned on the plug. I want on a really low heat. In a cold pan, I'm gonna go straight with the pork belly. And then see if there's enough fat in there because you know, pork belly has some lean bit something. If it's not, I can add a little bit of olive oil. But right now I'm gonna do it dry. We'll let that let sit. The oils are nearly out of here. I'm going to keep that. That's the base for my sauce. It's not a lot actually, but it's enough. It's getting crispy. Now I want to start to bloom the pepper to really get that pepper flavor out. I'm going to go in. Be generous important it's what makes the dish I can only smell it and you know what just a couple of minutes here maybe a minute or two it doesn't need too much time and it's gonna I can still smell I'm starting to smell the heat it's just about done absolutely delicious then before taking off the pan another hit black pepper just to really yeah. and I should have a towel of meat but I don't so let's 
So I've got a pan, put all the pasta in there, and I'm going to fill it with about, for this, I want a shadow because I really want a starchy, and you know, it's not on. I'm going to turn it on now. 800, very little. Now, what I want to do, just jiggle it around, just to start releasing the starches. Take my salt, and I'm going to put in quite a lot of salt in. Now that's seasoning because it's going to be the base of the sauce and it's starting to release its starch right now so to key is when you're using so little water is to really keep the noodles moving keep the pasta moving and you know it's gonna stick together as it boils it's gonna make it more easy to work with and my attention is on the pasta making sure it doesn't stick you know a little bit of care and attention you know sometimes yes um, set and forget works I want to make sure the strands aren't sticking together and I want to make sure that it's not sticking to the bottom and then everything like that is just all dandy just you can tell here pasta is nearly done starchy water coming up it's nearly tender and you know absolutely perfect for me I can tell normally but yeah I think it's just about done in a, another half a minute turn off the heat bring back the thingy Put the noodles straight in here. I don't care about the liquid. The liquid is the base of the sauce. Straight in here. Let me just clear this up in a moment. And the heat's not on. No, no, I've not turned the heat on. It's just, okay. And then let's add some of that. And you know, add a few tablespoons, just enough to cover. Just a bit more. Okay, and I think that'll, that'll, that'll do. So, there's enough liquid. You can see the liquid's actually emulsifying here, and that's not even adding this yet. So to this, I'm mixing up this, making sure that it's nice and lovely and incorporated with the pecorino egg, and egg, extra egg yolk, and the glass. And I use the spatula so I get everything in there. Okay. The heat is still off. I'm, 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 I'm working, I'm controlling, making sure that everything will be incorporated nicely. Okay. And then I'm gonna give it a mix, incorporate that into the sauce. Let's put this back on. Medium low heat. Really making sure that it gets fully incorporated. Really little heat. And I'm using a spatula to really make sure that the sauce does not stay too long in one place. And you can see it, it's tightening up. Look at that sauce. It's runny. It's still runny. Just a little bit of heat. It's still not enough yet. Still not enough, just a little bit more. But you can tell, see. So on the lowest heat, starting to run. That is nearly there, just a little bit more tight. And that's why the starchy water and not no cream required. This is the cheese, this is the egg, this is the starchy water. This is a nice emotion motion and that is it take off the plate our dish this is the warm plate and you know let's get this and i'm not going to be fancy this is for myself just going to pour that on there scrape the sauce get all that lovely sauce on there or pecorino on top nice delicious pecorino so 
some black pepper. Freshly ground over the top as well. And I like a little bit of flavor of olive oil, so extra virgin olive oil just over the top. Delicious. Where's my wine? So the wine that I've got for this meal today is a 2013 Pinot Noir from Joseph Phelps from the Solomon Coast. Uh, not a traditional wine pairing with carbonara or Italian food, but got a little bit of age, 2013. Uh, I think it's ready to drink now and I think it's going to be absolutely delicious. Um, fruity notes, maybe some peppery from the aging um, notes and it's going to add something to the dish and that's why I think this would be a very good um, wine to go with the dish. So yeah, and we'll be serving that in a uh, burgundy glass as you can tell from the wine bowl. So yeah, opening bottles, I normally like to go at the top, people used to go on the bottom because um, the glasses back for the bottles had lead in them back then, and uh, so you didn't want lead in your wine, but nowadays a lot of them are lead free, but yeah, opening a lot of bottles with this. You want the bin to go off center so that when it actually goes down, it comes around in the center. Opening, opening, opening. Not all the way down. Okay, pull it up. One go. Pour myself a glass and let's have a look. Let's put some air into that. Mmm, very fruity, some strawberries, cherries. Oh, I think some floral notes in there as well. Mmm, and some spice. And you know, that spice is going to complement the pepper quite well in this dish with the acidity. It's make me salivate. Oh, very, very nice. Yeah. I think this is going to be great for the wine. So for the salad, we've got tomato, burrata, olive oil, uh, some pepper if you want. Uh, I've got some salt just to salt the tomatoes and stuff blending with it. Got some flaky salt. This is smoked. Uh, molden smoked salt and some balsamic. I think this is about 20 years aged. So for the burrata salad, you can use any tomatoes, but uh, at the moment, these are probably the nicest ones here. So I'm just gonna have them on a little, just put them back. Cause I'm gonna salt them. I want to get as much liquid out of them as possible. Parts of seasoning. So they're sweet already naturally. And if they're a bit bigger, you know, don't need to be perfect. Different shapes, different sizes. And you know, it's, uh, have different colors, you know, contrasting colors. Normally you would add some basil, but at the moment, uh, due to supply issues, uh, there aren't any basil in Hong Kong. Well, not where I am anyway, at the moment. So it's simple, we're just gonna cut these smaller so that we can open up there surface area opening up their surface area so that um, we can get some salt in there okay get some salt okay just gonna set that aside for 20 minutes now we're back so I've gone ahead and I've drained the burrata and I've patted it dry. You know, water, excess water is still creamy inside, so but I've drained it. Place it on the serving plate, right in the middle. The tomatoes have given off 
some liquid. It's been 20 minutes. We want to pat that down just to absorb with clean kitchen towels, just to absorb as much as we can. And then we can put that around, scatter it around. Yeah, that's a lot of water. You can tell. Yeah, so we can scatter around. Yeah, that. see how much water's coming off. It's gonna be nice, sweet. It's gonna firm up just a little bit. So we're placing it around the burrata. Placing around the water, let's move that to the side. And then let's drizzle with some olive oil. You now you want some of that. Give it plenty of salt, especially on the burrata. And I'm using smoked mold and sea salt. I like the bite, I like the thing. And yeah, don't be too scared. Just put a little bit more than you think is in too much. And then it should be fine. And for me, I like a little bit of black pepper with my uh, burrata. Freshly ground tomatoes. And then some balsamic. Just around the tomatoes. Just to give it that little bit of sweetness. And then that's it. I would normally have some basil, but supply issues in Hong Kong, I can't actually get any. And then, yeah, uh, and that's it. Simple little starter, and time to roll the B-roll. Okay, let's set that aside. Salad. Okay, let's see how this tastes. Oh my god. Oh. Look at that. Mmm. Mmm. Absolutely creamy. Divine and pecorino, oh, the sauce, the pepper, the heat. Oh. Mm. And you know what? Oh. The fat in this. The acidity cuts through that and that takes the sharpness out. This takes the sharpness out of the wine. Fruity, peppery, mmm. They complement each other perfectly well. It's an unusual match, but it's a match in general. And you know what? If you like this content, if you like this and you want to see more of this, this is absolutely, I'm going to devour this. But if you like it, Subscribe, like, give it a like. It helps my channel expand. I'll put the...